We are here at University Kiss with Michelle Fowler. She's the Assistant Director of Science at the Goddard Space Flight Center at NASA. She studies binary stars and one of the regular hosts of Discovery Science Channel's How the Universe Works and Space's Deepest Secrets. And she also has hosted the podcast Orbital Path and has a book coming out <laughs> called 111 Places in Space You Don't Want to Miss. And we have wonderful questions to ask Michelle about everything. I'm looking forward to it. Life, the universe, and everything. So do you think it's within the realm of possibility that we can apply the properties of physics to human behavior? Allegorically, of course. <laughs> so the properties of stars and of what's happening in space to the way we behave as humans. Well, there's no, I mean, to me, there's no difference. Where do we come from? We come from the stars. Where are we going? You know, I mean, all of those things, there, there's no, astronomy isn't just about far away. You know, the, the, the only thing that makes the, the calcium in my chip tooth, which I will get fixed, is a dying star. There, there's, there's nothing else in the universe that makes calcium. Uh, there's nothing else in the universe that makes the carbon, which makes up most of my body. Right. So, the, you know, the connection is so intimate and so already there. You have to remember that the, the human brain is, you know, perceiving the universe through the filters of our senses. Right. Our sense of beauty may be as good a way to explore the universe as mathematics. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I thought that maybe we're drawn to some people and some people we don't resonate with, like vibration theme. Maybe we were connected, our molecules were connected at the Big Bang or after the Big Bang and then blasted apart and then connected again and then blasted apart and we found 14 billion year old molecules that were together and that's why we resonate with some people, not others. But do you realize you share that with every point in space and time that exists in the universe? So the idea is the observable universe, and we have evidence of this. This isn't just something that we say theoretically. Right. All that we see, and, and, and now we think that this, uh, you know, th 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 this particular universe that we find ourselves in is at least about 80 billion light years across, all of that was once much smaller than an electron. There, there's evidence for this. And so you are actually connected intimately, entangled in deep, deep oh, ways. Talk about entanglement. Yes, entanglement. You are entangled to every other point of space and time that exists. Every creature. I mean, there may be super advanced aliens that live millions of light years away. You are as close to them as you are to your husband, to, to your children, you know, to friends, you are entangled simultaneously with everything. So this idea of quantum entanglement is something that's a hundred years old. Right. It goes all the way back to Albert Einstein, right. who predicted it but didn't like it. Yes, because he said it doesn't make sense. Yes, he said it, this doesn't make sense. You talk about the universe in a kiss. One of the things that as physicists we're grappling with is that all points in space and time exist simultaneously. And in every little tiny point of space and time, every other point is entangled. So the, the amazing thing is that, you know, our brains do not seem to be perceiving the reality of space and time. Mm -hmm. You know, we appear to be limited creatures mm -hmm. that could only perceive that the, the, the time seems to be going in a progression. Right. Space seems to be something you can move through, but right. not, not time. Physics is showing us experimentally, not just theoretically, that, that our senses are not perceiving the way space and time really are that space and time may exist as a whole thing uh, all at once. And so the moment you kiss someone, the moment something is wonderful yeah. and emotionally resonant, that moment contains all other moments of space and time. We find ourselves in this situation of mortality. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're little bits of stardust, literally, that mm -hmm. come together, you know, DNA, organic molecules. We found all those in meteorites. So, you know, pretty much what we are is meteorite material uh -huh. that, that got dumped on Earth with, with liquid water to be a solvent, right. you start to have reactions, you right, get right. things like DNA. We just wake up, we're conscious for a brief time, and then we die. I did want to go a little bit into um, art and creation and creativity. 
and earlier we were talking about psychedelics and the spatial awareness and the connectedness because you mentioned scientists are interested. So psychedelics, you know, I, 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 I have not tried them but I'm curious to yeah. because maybe it will help us understand this idea that space and time are not linear, mm -hmm. that they are more connected. And I, for one, have never been one to think of science as just being about linear thinking and logic. You know, it has to be about that emotional response. I think it's kind of a, a gentle lie that the scientific process is you, you sort of rationally, step by step, figure things out. Mm -hmm. It's much more intuitive. And you know, intuition helps you set the questions, sure. build your experiments. You know, intuition may say, well, maybe we should try this way of looking at it. Exactly. That and being so, creative. Yeah. Uh, but, but that's very yeah. much my experience of science is far more intuitive than logical. Right. Oh, well, that's lovely. We have no idea how big the universe is. We have no idea at all. It could be infinite. It could be the shape of a donut. We have no idea. But the reason we don't know what the entirety of the universe is is because we're limited by the time that there's been time for light to get to us. Oh. And so when we say the observable universe, what we mean is everything that there's been time for light to get to us. So the universe may be vast, but you know, there's only been 13.8 billion years right. for light to get to us. So, so I mean, that's what we call the observable universe. Right. Now, if you're looking at something that far away, so um, looking at something, say, you know, 13, the light took 13 billion years to get to us. Right. You're seeing that part of the universe as it was that long ago. So, you know, if you have a galaxy that, you know, it, the, the light took 10 billion years to get to us, as you capture that image tonight in your telescope, you see it as it was 10 billion years ago. So it may not even be it there. It may not even be there anymore. We've, we've seen stars that are that the light took about 12 billion years to get to us. That star is not there anymore. No. Oh, wow. But, uh, but we, we image it in the sky because the light is still traveling to us. So another one of my songs, <laughs> which is called Bring the Love. When I feel that I am the universe, I see you in everything. Absolutely. Oh, yay. And everything in you. So could it be that when we are in love or feel love, we feel the most connected to everything because love is like the energy that exists in all matter? Here we are, these tiny little bits of, uh, you know, of space dust that come together, become aware for a time, and then our atoms do other things. Right. So we exist for such a brief part of the universe and we're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. every, every single one of us is this cosmic gift. Amazingness. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I certainly feel that. I have another song, Imagine a World with No Time. Yes. Light does not experience time. The, okay, the and I said if you, oh, because I said if you had darkness, uh -huh. could you still have time? You know what I mean? You're onto something deep. <laughs> and let, let, let me tell you why, okay? What happens when there really is, at the end of the universe, total darkness? And this is where another Big Bang might start. So. Light itself does not experience time or space. Time stops, so a photon could travel the entire universe to itself instantaneously. If you are on a light beam, there is no such thing as what we perceive as space and time. If the universe now is, is dark, the, the only thing that you have are just low energy photons. Photons don't perceive space and time. If the universe becomes nothing but light, space and time don't exist anymore, and you go back to a pre-Big Bang state. Oh. And all around us, we are interacting with things that do not experience time and space. For, for light, the light coming into your eyes right now, that energy did not experience the universe expanding. Then, okay, first we thought love was gravity, <laughs> then we said no, it's electromagnetic, so now we'll say it's light. Hey, it's probably electrochemical, but, but, but light is the thing that connects everything. And I mean, to us yeah. it seems to bounce around, and to move from point A to point B, and to come at us from the sun, but the light doesn't think so. The light doesn't experience space and time the way we do. So once again, we're up against an experimental fact that space and time, as our brain slices it up, yes. isn't the whole story. You know, we were talking about grief and love. Yes. And you know that uh, you know I've got this this tattoo that my husband wrote in Elvish, you know, because he I lost him to cancer. But you know, I, I said to him as I was holding his hand, you know, when the universe began, this moment existed. 
I was holding your hand at the beginning of the universe, the moment of the Big Bang. And when the universe ends, maybe cycles into another universe, this point of space and time still is there. I will be holding your hand at the end of the universe. We believe that to literally be true. I don't get to see him again, but I get to see him now, in the greater sense of now. So for me, love and science and light are all tangled up together.